100 days on the road photographing Harley Davidson riders. Hi, I'm Joel Grimes with the Joel Grimes Academy, and I'm going to talk about a project I did last summer where I spent 100 days straight on the road, 13,000 miles across America, photographing Harley Davidson riders and their bikes. So I put my money where my mouth is, and I keep talking about building a body of work, do a series, and so I did it. And so I told my wife, Amy, I said, look, this is something I got to do. And I realized, and I have realized over the years, that if I go and I take any subject matter, spend enough time, repeat that process of photographing over and over again, at the end I become what I call an expert in that arena or that genre. And so that's how I look at building a body of work, is repeating it over and over again. So, if I don't know if there's some photographers out there that photograph Harley Davidson writers across America, but I know now that I'm probably one of a very small few of photographers on the planet that have repeated the, products, the process of photographing Harley riders and their bikes like I have the last summer. So that makes me to some degree an expert in that area. So you can do that too. You can pick a subject matter. You can go out, take surfers, you take ballerinas, you take whatever it is. You repeat enough times where you build a body of work you put that out in the marketplace and people take notice. I took off and one of the biggest challenges that I had was of course recruiting the writers. So I say not only do you need to have great skills of you know, taking pictures and uh, you know, you might have some good driving skills if you're going to spend 13,000 miles on the road, but you got to have other skill sets like recruiting. So how do you recruit Harley Davidson writers? Well, I didn't have anything pre-set up. Everything I did was we pull into a town, maybe if there was a Harley Davidson dealership, we'd go to that dealership, we start asking questions, we start, you know, working it a little bit, find out, you know, if they have, well, they say we have a, a, a gathering next Thursday night at this bar, and there'll be a lot of riders there, you can start talking to them. Every time we move into a new town, we had to start over from scratch. And that is a challenge. That's a lot of work. And it's a little scary, too, when you're going and approaching some burly dude with tattoos that looks like could take your head off. It was, uh, it was a bit of a challenge. It was fun though. And I discovered that these, these riders are amazing people and they love what they do. They love their bikes. They love the culture. And when you participate in what they love, the odds go up that they will also participate in what you love, which is taking pictures and creating images. So we recruited some great subjects and um, I also uh, photographed the bikes. So let me explain real quick two approaches. The portraits were done with a single backdrop that I had. It's a Westcott. Uh, it's like five by seven feet or 80, 60 inches by 85 inches roughly. It fits right on the back of the, uh, the X drop that Westcott has. It's a little frame that pops up. I could set that up anywhere. So I set this, I, I came up with this idea so I could repeat it over and over again so that the images look consistent throughout the whole project. That was the way I wanted to approach it. I could have photographed portraits and environmental portraits, but I thought, no, I'm at rallies, I'm at different things outside of bars. Uh, so I thought, I'm gonna do this idea where I do a gray backdrop, which is 50% gray, halfway between pure white, pure black. And with that 50% gray, in Photoshop, later, I can, through a blending mode, attach any texture I want. I go through all this on the Jewel Grinds Academy. It's a lot of fun. People wanna know, how do I get that? So I start with a plain gray background but later I end up with a textured background. You can photograph anything, concrete, an old stucco wall, whatever it is, later you can put that into your scene or your backdrop and make it any value or any texture you want. And so it's a lot of fun, really easy, and later you can make choices. You can say, well, I don't like that texture, let me try something new. So you're not stuck with one look. On the bikes, I approached it also with one light. Now on the, on the portraits, I used a one light beauty dish over the top. And so that was 24 inch beauty dish by Westcott. But on the bikes, I used a, the biggest softbox that Westcott makes. It's a, about four by five feet, They're extra large. On a paint pole with my cam ranger connected to my camera, I can uh, have the cam ranger trigger my strobe and bracket my ISO. So I get both ambient and strobe exposure compensation. So I do an under normal over. So I'm doing uh, the HDR, gives me 32-bit processing, 
super detail, super tones, incredible gradients, especially when you're photographing leather, rubber, uh, chrome, paint, all that stuff. And then I would strobe the front of the bike and I would do three clicks. I'm in the scene. I'm leaning up over the bike. I'm not crossing into the bike. I'm leaning around the bike, but I'm in the scene of the picture. Then I walk, after I do that three clicks, I walk and do the back of the bike. Again, I'm in the scene. But then at the end, I turn the strobe off and I photograph a background plate, which allows me to paint out myself and only apply the light on the bike where I want it. Last weekend, I was in Augusta, Georgia, uh, doing a talk for the photo uh, festival. And I had a gallery with 15 of my images and one of the ladies came up to me and said, how do you not get the strobe light to hit the streets or the ground around the bike? And I said, great observation, because I'm not painting that in later in Photoshop. I'm only painting the light where I want it to fall on the bike. So with that technique, it gave me a really cool look that allowed me to control my light. And it's not difficult. It takes a little bit of practice, but really fun, which you can apply to not just bikes, you can apply to anything. That's the great news about where we're at in photography today. We can do things we could never do five, 10 years ago. Good, good times. Here's what I'm gonna leave you with. I put my money where my mouth is. I went out and did 100 days on the road. I'm gonna probably go and spend some more time doing the Harley project. I'm not done with it yet. I can also pick another project that I'll probably do. I'm not, I mean, there's a, so many options out there I could go if I could live to be a thousand years old, I'd never have end out of end up out of ideas. So pick an idea, go repeat it over and over again. Build a body of work, and then put that work out in the marketplace. And people will follow you; they'll recognize you. And of course, if you want to create an income with that work, then it gets it out there in the marketplace, and people will hire you for that. So become an expert at something. Repeat it. Repeat it. Repeat it. Do it more than 99% of other people on the planet and you will stand out. So don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe and hit that little bell and then you can keep up with all my current content.